Hello everyone. Today I am presenting a case series on multi-compartmental orbital masses in their diagnostic insights on MRI. Myself, Dr. Sparsha Agrawal from JJ Group of Hospital, Mumbai. Uh -huh. We all know orbit includes uh, eye globe and the rest of the soft tissues within the orbital zone. Uh, so orbit on the basis of its uh, extraocular muscles, they are divided into the compartments. And the multi-compartment orbital masses are those which involve more than one anatomical compartment within the orbit. So the diagnosis of multi-compartmental orbital masses typically involves a combination of clinical examination, imaging, which includes CT scan and MRI, and sometimes biopsy for histopath analysis. Uh, the multi-compartmental orbital masses can arise from various types of uh, tumors, uh, which could be benign or malignant, then inflammatory lesions, vascular or metastatic. So the orbital anatomy involves, uh, first of all, there is eye globe anteriorly, with the uh, extraocular muscles are seen inserting posterior to the limbus on the eye globe, with a uh, wide insertion anteriorly, and are seen converging posteriorly at the level of orbital apex, therefore giving a cone-like appearance, with the structures within the cone given as intraconal compartment, and the structures outside the extraocular muscles are, are form, forms extraconal compartment. So the intraconal compartment includes the cone, uh, which is formed by the extraocular muscles, which are uh, basically seven in number, four recti, two obliques, and one levator palpebrae superioris. And then there is intraconal uh, fat, vessels, and the nerves. The extraconal uh, compartment includes the extraconal fat in the lacrimal gland, which is placed superolaterally. The basic MRI protocol for any orbital lesion involves a screening sequence of the brain, which is generally flare axial, and then the coronal and axial thin sequences of the orbit, uh, which involves T2, T2 fat set, T1, and the T1 fat set sequence, and post contrast T1 fat saturated sequence. Now, coming to the case here, first case, there is a 38 year old male patient who presented with a gradually progressive painless diminution of lesion in the right eye and bilateral supraorbital swelling since one year. There were no other comorbidities. Uh, visual acuity of the right eye was finger counting from one meter, the left eye was standing normal, 6 by 20. Uh, on MRI, and the first star coronal imaging, the, uh, the right orbit shows an ill defined homogeneously hyperintense lesion involving the entire right orbit. Uh, with its expansion and uh, the spread of the lesion in the right temporal region. It is the extraocular muscles cannot be delineated. This, uh, the lesion is almost entirely involved in the right orbit. And the similar intensity lesion is seen in the left orbit involving the, uh, mainly in the superior temporal region, uh, the extraocular compartment that spread in the frontotemporal uh, soft tissue, subcutaneous soft tissue. The lesion uh, shows the intense diffusion restriction on both sides with uh, corresponding draw and uh, there is homogeneous post-contrast enhancement. Uh, similar uh, intensity lesions are also seen in the uh, spine involving the lower dorsal, uh, lumbar and sacral vertebral bodies. So the diagnosis on the basis of these findings is orbital lymphoma. This is another case of orbital lymphoma uh, involving the left orbit uh, extra as well as intraconal superior aspect of left orbit with uh, extension into the frontal sinus with breach in the frontal bone. And the post, uh, post chemotherapy, there is significant resolution with residual lesion seen in the superior aspect of the orb. There is uh, There was retinal detachment associated with uh, detachment in the left orbit. Uh, second case is of 11 year old male child who presented with swelling in the right eye since two months. It was not associated with pain, redness, or any discharge. Uh, on MRI, the lesion appears uh, to be heterogeneously hyperintense on stir coronal image, uh, mainly involving the uh, superior aspect of the right orbit, uh, involving the in, uh, intra as well as extraconal compartment. There is uh, the lesion is seen spreading into the right frontal sinus as well as there is intracranial extension into the extraaxial space in the right basic frontal region. The lesion does not show any uh, obvious diffusion restriction. However, uh, it shows homogeneous post-contrast enhancement and uh, there is breach in the right frontal bone. So the uh, since the 
uh, age of the patient is 11 year old, the diagnosis of rhabdomyosarcoma was made, which was confirmed on biopsy. And this is the follow up MRI of the patient after around nine cycles of uh, chemo regime, which shows a significant resolution with only residual uh, soft tissue. Uh, post contrast enhancing soft tissue uh, seen in the superior aspect of the right orbit with significant reduction in the mass effect and the uh, size of the lesion. A 66 year old female presented with orbital pain and gradually increasing swelling in the left eye since two years with left eye proptosis. There were no visual complaints, no eye discharge or redness. Patient was a known hypertensive since 10 years. So on MRI, there is uh, the lesion appears to be heterogeneously hyperintense on flare action involving mainly the intrafonal compartment with uh, uh, which and appears uh, hypo to iso intense on T2. There is uh, no obvious diffusion restriction. The, the lesion appears uh, hypo intense on T1 action mainly involving the intrafonal compartment of left orbit with uh, proptosis of left eye and uh, uh, there is homogeneous post contrast enhancement. Since the patient did not have any uh, medical history and no known uh, comorbidity, in patient was not an old case of thyroid, the diagnosis of orbital pseudotumor was made and it was proven on biopsy. This is another case of uh, orbital pseudotumor where there is involvement of bilateral orbit uh, involving the intra as well as extra component compartment of both the orbits. Predominant involvement can be seen on the right side with uh, uh, mild to moderate proptosis of right eye. And then there is homogeneous post contrast enhancing soft tissue. There is no obvious diffusion restriction even in this uh, patient. So this was also diagnosed as orbital similar tumor and uh, it was proven on bats. This is another uh, such case uh, of a 42 year old lady who presented with uh, headache and swelling in the uh, left eye, which was progressively increasing since four months. This patient has a history, known history of hyperthyroidism since one month. And in this case, we can see that there is a uh, involvement of both the orbits uh, with predominant involvement on the left side. Uh, it's, uh, we can see that the uh, eyelids are also showing uh, soft tissue, uh, hypo intense soft tissue in the T1 axial sequence uh, with uh, this, uh, involvement of the retro orbitals uh, uh, fat. Uh, the, Additional finding in this patient was that the both the extraocular, both uh, eye extraocular muscles are uh, showing bulky belly with the sparing of the tendinous insertion. And then there was a homogeneous post contrast enhancement of the entire soft tissue of the both the orbits. This was a, in this own case of uh, hypothyroidism, this was diagnosed as thyroid of thermopathy and patient was put on steroids and showed uh, drastic response. 30 years old female, operated case of left side salivary duct carcinoma, received radiotherapy, now presented with left eye proptosis and diminution of vision since last two months. Uh, so this patient shows on MRI, we can see that there is uh, flare axial, flare hyper intense uh, uh, intra as well as extraconal soft tissue lesion involving the retro orbital region. And then there is involvement of left optic nerve and the peri peri nerve, perineural sheath. Then the lesion is seen extending into the uh, cavernous sinus and then there is involvement of the left side of basal system as well as the, the lesion is showing uh, expansion into the extension into the meccal stem with its extension and uh, the post contrast sequence shows there is homogeneous enhancement of the entire soft tissue in the basal system, the meccal scape, and the adjacent dura cavernous sinus and then the orbit, so that's give of the extensive perineural spread of the metastasis. A seven year old male child presented with sudden onset proptosis of left eye. Uh, there was no history of pain, redness or discharge, no history of vision loss. On uh, MRI you can see a lobulated multi-cystic lesion with the variable size cystic spaces showing the uh, fluid which, is, which appears uh, flare, uh, which shows fluid fluid levels on T2 flare sequences and uh, appears, uh, the fluid appears hyper intense on T1 with blooming on SWS, suggestive of hemorrhagic content. There was no associated uh, diffusion restriction. 
On post contrast sequences, we can see that the lesion does not show any obvious enhancement, however, brain enhancement can be seen. There is significant mass effect in the form of displacement of the eye globe laterally and optic nerve. So, diagnosis of renal lymphatic malformation. Another such case of multicystic lobulated lesion involving the intra as well as extraconal compartment in the left eye, causing mass effect in the form of anterior displacement of left eye. The, uh, with proptosis and when the cystic spaces show fluid fluid level, there is no obvious enhancement suggestive of renal lymphatic malformation. And last case is of a 32 year old male patient presented with sudden onset painful diminution of vision in left eye and altered sensorium since one way. Patient is a known case of diabetes mellitus on treatment since last one year. There is no history of trauma. On his MRI, we can see that there is heterogeneously hyperintense soft tissue involving the intra as well as extraconal compartment of the orbit. And uh, there is, the soft tissue is also seen extending into the preceptal region, mainly in the medial aspect of left eye. Uh, there is a star hyperintense collection in the bilateral ethmoid paranasal sinuses and bilateral frontal paranasal sinuses. Um, so there are two well-defined uh, uh, large T2 hyper intense lesions are seen in the basic frontal region in both the frontal lobes. There is a T2 heterogeneous content within the lesions and there is significant perilesional edema. The lesions show intense homogeneous restriction and uh, the peripheral rim enhancement can be seen on the post contrast suggestive of uh, cerebral abscess. The orbital soft tissue also shows homogeneous post contrast enhancement. The left maxillary sinus shows peripheral mucosal hyper enhancement. Overall findings are uh, suggestive of uh, invasive frontal sinusitis with preceptal and orbital cellulitis with uh, intracranial extension given bilateral large cerebral abscesses with significant perilegional edema. So, on the basis of MRI, we can uh, differentiate uh, multi compartmental lesions, so lymphoma. Uh, on MRI appears as a iso intense on T1 and hyper intense on T2 uh, with uh, homogeneous post contrast enhancement. And the lymphoma generally shows intense diffusion restriction with the drop on ADC, which is the characteristic feature of lymphoma, which helps in differentiating it from pseudotumor and other inflammatory lesions. They are generally seen in the elderly age group and with uh, more than 60, uh, more than equal to 60 years of age. And the, they are generally unilateral and extraconal, involving the superior temporal region and lacrimal bone. However, they can be multi-compartmental. Uh, metastatic lesions are uh, they are around one to thirty uh, encompass around one to thirteen percent of orbital tumors, and they are the most common uh, cancer to metastasize is the breast cancer. And they generally the imaging findings are not any uh, characteristic findings of uh, metastatic. They generally have ISO2 hyper intense lesion on T2 and uh, hyper intense on T1 with homogeneous post -contact. The They'll generally present with a known history mm -hmm. and that helps us in diagnosing it as a metastatic lesions. Uh, Venal lymphatic malformation they generally present in the pubertal and adolescent age group and it's a uh, significant uh, orbital swelling and proptosis as a main presenting complaint. They are also known as lymphangioma. They are generally extraconal, but they can be multi-compartmental. Uh, then the sudden increase in proptosis indicates that the hemorrhage within the cystic lesion. They, on MRI, the characteristic appearance is a fluid fluid levels on uh, T2 sequence with uh, uh, some sort of uh, blooming on him uh, as a gradient sequence as a stream of hemorrhage within the cyst. Mm -hmm. They generally present with a lobulated multicystic lesion. The orbital pseudotumor are the idiopathic inflammatory lesions, generally presenting in four to six decades. They are the most common painful orbital mass in the adults. Uh, they are the third most common orbital lesion after thyroid ophthalmopathy and lymphoma. They are generally the diagnosis of exclusion. The characteristic uh, MRI finding is the ISO2 hypo intense on T2 sequence. They are they do not uh, generally show any diffusion restriction. There is intense homogeneous post contrast enhancement. The differentiating point between the orbital pseudotumor and the thyroid ophthalmopathy is the involvement is generally the extraocular muscles involvement. The uh, pseudotumor involves the tendinous insertion, while the uh, thyroid ophthalmopathy spares tendinous insertion of the extraocular muscle. 
rhabdomyosarcoma is a tumor of the children. Uh, they generally present in the childhood. Uh, the head and neck and the orbit are the most common sites of rhabdomyosarcoma. They, they have a rapid uh, clinical history. They generally present with a rapidly enhanced uh, growing mass. Uh, biopsy is mandatory for diagnosis and uh, MRI. The lesion will appear iso to hypo intense to extraocular muscles on T1, hyper intense on T2 with homogeneous post contrast. Uh, since the lesion is malignant, there is there can be associated bone erosion and intracranial extension. Nuker is a locally aggressive fungal infection with uh, which generally involves the paranasal sinus with extension into orbit and uh, brain via direct spread or through vascular channels. Uh, the risk factors include uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, iron overload, immunocompromised state, and chronic steroid intake. The characteristic MR sign is a black turbinate sign, which is that uh, the turbinates appear hypointense on T2 and post contrast sequence and does not show homogeneous enhancement. The obliteration of periantral or retroantral fat is an early indicator of uh, uh, spread of the uh, fungal sinusitis. And the uh, orbital extension can result in orbital apex syndrome or panophthalmitis. Intracranial extension can result in meningitis, extradural or intradural, uh, intraparenchymal abscesses. These are my references. Thank you. <laughs>